Hi everyone, um, good to speak to you today. Um, so Sean mentioned my name is Gwen. I am based in Zambia, um, in Lusaka. I've been living in Lusaka for about three and a half years now, um, working for Challenges for about the last 18 months. Um, and I head up our team here. And um, so we work with a lot of SMEs in Zambia and other kinds of ecosystem enablers. Um, but we have also done some work uh, with some members of the Scottish International Development Alliance in the past um, and a lot of market linkage and so on. And so hopefully today um, we'll be able to just give you an overview of what we mean by ch change management. Um, <clears throat> Some of the steps that you can take um, to really apply that and it's great to speak to you today and um, as Sean mentioned if you do have any questions or any clarifications you want to make um, it's not a super formal session today so please do just just write those in the chat and we can hope for this session excellent thank you Gwen and yes our standard approach to training is we use chat and house rules whereby we try and speak confidential confidentially within the four walls but obviously today if the session is being recorded as Laura said that those breakout rooms are the times that we can actually really pick into the, the sort of the real life examples and have those sort of more honest conversations and look at the problems in a little bit more depth. And then just the, before we go into the, the training material itself, it's worth saying that the content we use, we've been a strategic partner with the Chartered Management Institute and we're a delivery partner for the past 12 years. So a lot of this material is based on our management and leadership course that we run along with the professional consulting and we've taken out the key elements <coughs> excuse me of that material um, so there is a lot more material that sits underneath this um, so we can share a lot more in the sense of documents uh, templates um, and resources to back up the information and add to any elements that we might not be able to, to cover today in terms of time so looking at the overview of what we'll cover, so planning and presenting your business case for change and the factors that affect it. So this um, can look at it from a multiple range of perspectives in terms of it can be COVID change. So that sort of reactive change to something that's happened outside of our um, sort of ability to impact or influence, sorry. Um, and then it could also be, I've seen that one of the organizations is looking at a rebranding. So that's something, a sort of proactive change that we're taking on um, and actually trying to implement and, and run with. Then one of the examples that we can look at um, or potentially is an organization that we work with. Um, we started working with them before COVID um, had struck and it started to impact their own operations was Farmery. And they're an organization based in Uganda that were uh, did sales of dairy products. And they had to, as a result of COVID and the fact that they couldn't do face-to-face -face, um, sales, they had to sort of rebrand as in their, their approach, but also change their customer base and how they've um, worked as an organization. The second element that we'll look at is how change impacts stakeholders and how to communicate with with them using the relevant mediums and uh, providing that relevant information. So obviously stakeholders covers everyone that's involved or impacted by your business or your organization. So understanding where they sit in terms of what level of influence or what impact um, they have on your organization and what level of information they need to know is sort of vital in terms of how you go around um, the communication process. And then finally, we'll touch on monitoring and measuring change. So I know this is one of the, the questions that come in in terms of how to report and measure change throughout time. Um, and it's probably a much broader session than just an hour and a half of, of an overview. So hopefully we can start to touch on the key elements there and uh, look at what's needed. I suppose, yeah, one of the things I've certainly learned from being stuck at home for the last seven months is how to manage my own time and my own schedule. Um, but certainly after coming back from furlough and actually trying to get into a much more rhythmic routine in terms of how I work and when my sort of peak hours are in terms of um, concentration and performance. At the start of COVID, that would have been something that we would have found difficult to talk with, um, with our sort of CEO about in terms of having sort of split days and split sessions and working slightly differently across multiple people within the team. 
So I think in that sense that, and it's something that we can go on to talk about later in terms of that timeline for people's perceptions of change and that sort of initial fear that, yeah, COVID certainly taught us that there's more than one um, one way to do a certain activity, which has been good. So I think now to what we'll do is jump into the content. And what I'll do first is we'll do a short poll. So this poll should be active. What we'll try and do now is get a reflection of what change management means to you. And what we'll try and do is a word cloud um, that pulls all the different responses together. So please feel free to put as many sort of words or short phrases in as you feel sort of represent what change management is. And they can be positive or negative or neutral. Um, and what should happen is it magically appears on screen as a lovely word cloud. This is a difficult question to start us off with, Sean. What it does is, change just management mean to you? Yeah, and it can be anything from like resistance to change or it's an exciting opportunity. So I suppose, yeah, it's quite a broad sort of, yeah, there's quite a spectrum of things that we can go. Yes, perfect. They're all coming through now. So resilience products internally planning. I'm sure some of these are joined together in terms of new products and services looking at organizations. Resilience is probably one of the key ones that we've all faced over the past few months in terms of we've had to adapt to change. So certainly something we can look at. Excellent. Sustainability. Again, one of the key ones in terms of adapting to that change and either pivoting or completely changing or sort of rethinking, um, both from an internal perspective, but also externally in terms of how we help our either beneficiaries or clients. So yeah, we can touch on some of these in terms of as we go through the through the training today and look at any of them that might stand out during the breakout room. So I'll try and do our next vote, which is which areas of change does your organization struggle with most? So maybe actually there's, I suppose for this, there's quite a small group. Do people want to, to just raise their hand and actually say which one they struggle with most? And certainly in terms of challenges, we find the planning quite challenging because of just the nature and the sort of the speed at which things have changed through COVID in terms of the different regulations and sort of impact that they've had. So having to constantly pivot to re-pivot has been really tough in terms of um, how we do that. So yeah, presenting your business case coming through along with finding innovative ways to incorporate new ideas. Um, again, due to COVID, this has probably been something that's been forced along, forced on many organizations in terms of trying to incorporate those ideas. And I suppose in a non-COVID way, presenting your business case, it's definitely something that we train and look at through a number of other training programs in terms of project management through to management and leadership in terms of being able to present that business case, whether it be a large scale unique project or something sort of small, small and internal. It provides a really good way of sort of diagnosing if something is, um, if it has legs, for want of a better way to say it, in terms of is it a viable option? Have we thought about the different costs, the different implications, what the resources are? Um, how does it affect the current operations or the current projects that are, that are ongoing? And it's also a really good way of empowering junior members of staff to own a project in terms of if someone comes with an idea, rather than saying yes, no to it, if we can push back and say, have you thought about the business case and give them a template in terms of being able to go away and think about those various factors. It's a really good way for them to say yes or no to their own ideas so that it's not seen as a top-down um, decision-making process. So certainly four key areas there that we'll hopefully cover today um, and certainly go into more detail in terms of the breakout rooms. So I'll just close this poll now and hand over to Gwen, I believe. Thank you, Sean. So I think the first thing for us to cover um, if we're doing a training on change management is to actually cover what we mean by change management. And I think the first thing to note about change management is that all organizations, whether big or small, or whether they are a business or a charity um, or another kind of organization, all undergo changes, um, whether through choice or whether through necessity. Um, but maybe where we all have a bit of learning to do is actually around how we manage that change. Um, I'm sure we can all relate to a situation where maybe we've been in a workplace, um, a boss has said, okay, we're gonna change this and we're gonna do it this way now. 
Um, and unless there's actually a process around how that change is going to be implemented, um, then the impact of that change may be negative or may not be quite as positive um, as it could be. And so the way that we're defining change management, as it says here on the slide, is the coordination of a structured period of transition, so structure being quite key there, from situation A to situation B, to hopefully achieve long lasting change within an organization. Change management could have a variety of scopes. It could be continuous small improvements, um, or it could be radical and substantive change in, in involving the whole organizational strategy. 